Welcome back to Intermediate Accounting, and this video is on contingencies. We're going to discuss the general accounting rules for contingencies, as well as the specific accounting rules for one type of contingency, warranties. We see on this slide here GAAP's definition for contingencies, but I prefer a slightly simplified definition of contingencies, something that might happen. So the accounting issue that we're faced with with contingencies is something took place this accounting period. Perhaps there was a lawsuit that began and uh, we think we may have to either pay out with this lawsuit or that we might receive cash with this lawsuit. Uh, we don't know because the final amount is going to be determined in a future accounting period. The question is, do we book a gain or loss this accounting period? Well, let's start by looking at the accounting rules for gain contingencies. So gain contingency, as I mentioned, a pending court case with a probable favorable outcome, we think we're likely to win and get some cash in the future. Maybe we're expecting to receive a refund from the government, from the IRS, or perhaps we're expecting to get some money. Someone promised us a gift or a donation, and we would receive that in the future. How do we account for these gain contingencies? Well, let's start by taking a little some notes here. We need to know that gain contingencies are not recorded. So no journal entry is booked to record a gain and to record a receivable, the expected cash to be received. But they are disclosed in the footnotes. So we give the investors some information about them in the footnotes to the financial statements, only on one condition. only if the probability of actually getting that ca receiving that cash in the future is high. So if we really, really, really are sure, very, uh, very, very likely to receive some cash in the future. We still don't book the journal entry, but we do write in the footnotes that we're likely to get this information, this amount of money, maybe give the range of the amount and why, explain why. Loss contingencies involve possible future losses and our, the accounting for loss contingencies depend on two things, the likelihood of the loss and the ability of the company to estimate or make a reasonable estimate of the amount of the loss. In terms of de uh, to determine the likelihood of the loss, GAAP, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, uh, defines three areas of probability that guide the accounting treatment. The management of a company has to determine whether the likelihood is considered of the loss is considered probable, reasonably possible, or remote. So there's a scale, right, of likelihood um, between about 0% likely to happen and about 100% likelihood to happen, although 100% would not be a contingency. Um, so probable, you know, somewhere up at the top, where exactly you draw the line, that's up to management to, to, to determine. So the accounting treatment, if a loss is considered by management to be probable, it's very likely we're going to have to make a payment out in the future, and we can come up with a reasonable estimate of how we would, how much we would have to pay out. We do two things, as you can see by these two arrows here. One is accrue, or in other words, record a journal entry for the loss and the liability, the amount that we, the, the account uh, that states that we owe money out in the future. If it, the, Probability is probable. We record the journal entry and we do one more thing, which is disclose information in the footnotes. We give the investors some more information about what took place, maybe a little bit about the lawsuit and uh, our best estimate of how much we think we're going to have to pay out if we know that. So a crew, record an entry and footnote disclosure. Now, if the probability that we're going to have to pay out is high, but we cannot make a reasonable estimate of how much we're going to have to pay out, then we can't book the journal entry, but we still do give footnote disclosure. We want to make sure we're telling our investors what we do know about this probable loss contingency. If the probability of a payout is reasonably possible, then we are going to 
have footnote disclosure, as we can see from this arrow here, only footnote disclosure. If we can come up with a reasonable estimate of the range or some range of amount that we may have to pay out, we give that information to the investor. And if the likelihood of that loss contingency results in us paying out is so remote, we do nothing. We just completely ignore it. Let's write down the accounting rules. A company should accrue a loss or an expense, so record a journal entry for a loss or an expense in the accounting period that it considers it probable that a liability has been incurred. So a liability has been incurred this period. We don't know for sure whether or not we're going to have to pay it out in the future, but we think that it is probable we will, and the amount can be reasonably estimated. Now this is true even if we book this entry, even if the cash paid out cash is paid out in a future accounting period. So again, we see an example of accrual accounting. Record the journal entry to record that loss or expense this period, even when we're, if we expect to pay out the cash in a future accounting period. In addition to recording that journal entry or accruing the loss, information about the loss contingency should also be disclosed in the footnotes. Give the investor more information about what's going on. Let's take a look at an example. Scorsese Inc. is involved in a lawsuit at December. So by year end, a lawsuit has taken place in this fiscal year. Prepare the December 31st entry, assuming it is probable that Scorsese will be liable for $900,000 as a result of this suit. So in terms of whether or not we're going to book an entry, two conditions need to hold. It has to be at least probable, the likelihood has to be at least probable, and the company needs to be able to estimate the amount, which they have. And so in this case, we need to record a journal entry. This might be to an account called Lawsuit Loss. or 900,000, and then we would credit some liability account to reflect on the balance sheet that we're gonna, we expect to owe money in the future. So maybe that account is called lawsuit liability. So what does this happen to, the, what, what does this do to the financial statements? Well, net income decreases by 900,000 and liabilities increase by 900,000. Let's look at a slightly different example. Scorsese Inc. is involved in a lawsuit by the end of the year, this fiscal year, prepare the December 31st entry, if any, assuming it is not probable, so it's not probable that Scorsese will be liable for any payment as a result of this lawsuit. In that case, no entry is recorded, but the company, if it is reasonably likely to happen, if it's reasonably possible to happen that to pay out, then the company should be disclosing some information about it in the footnotes. Here are some examples of loss contingencies that are usually accrued or booked as journal entries. The losses related to the collectability of receivables, obligations related to product warranties. We're going to take a look at that um, uh, in more detail soon. Um, premiums offered to customers. So when we have sales and we uh, offer some order, uh, other sort of um, incentive to our customers, if they spend uh, $1,000 at our company, we will give them um, 5% cash back rebate, um, we have to account for that amount that, that would be owed to them. Loss contingencies that are typically not accrued, the risk of loss um, for fire, explosion, other hazard, um, general unspecified business risks and risks from catastrophes, we don't tend to record an entry for those. Common loss contingencies, lawsuits, guarantees and warranties, and environmental liabilities. The remainder of this video is going to cover guarantee and warranty costs, and our next video, next topic in the class, is going to be on environmental liabilities. Let's start by looking at litigations, claims, and assessments.
Companies must consider the following factors in determining whether to record a liability with respect to pending or threatened little litigation and actual or possible claims and assessment. So the factors that the company needs to take into account are the time period, right? If the issue that took place, maybe there was a, um, a crash, uh, maybe this is Ford we're looking at and there was a specific crash and now there's um, a lawsuit against uh, uh, against the company. What period did that crash take place in? The probability of, of an unfavorable outcome. And the ability to make a blank of the loss, we should know from earlier slides that this is reasonable estimate. Let's move on to accounting for guarantee and warranty costs. Guarantees and warranties, promises made by the seller to the buyer to make good on a deficiency of quantity, quality, or performance in a product. Companies often provide one of two types of warranties to customers. Sometimes they offer both. The two types, uh, you're familiar with these two types, but you may not have ever heard these titles for them. An assurance type warranty. So all warranties are either assurance type warranties or service type warranties. Let's look at each one in a little more detail. Assurance types warranties are warranties that uh, the product that the customer buys meet agreed upon specifications um, the time that the sale is made. The important thing that we need to know about the uh, assurance type warranties is that they're at no additional cost to the customer. So they're included in the related, included in the sales price of whatever's being, the, the goods or service being sold. There's no option for the customer whether or not they want to buy this type of warranty. So no additional cost to the buyer. But of course there is an additional cost to the seller because they're providing this warranty. And the fact that they uh, might have to pay out in future accounting periods is why warranties are an example of a loss contingency. In the period that the goods are sold, the entire warranty expense and of course the related offsetting warranty liability is recorded in the year of the related sale. So if Sears is selling washing machines with a two-year warranty, at no cost, no additional cost above the washing machine sales price to the customer, in the same year that the company is record that Sears is recording the sales revenue related to those washing machines, it estimates the cost of all of the repairs on all of those washers sold for the next two years, if it were a two-year warranty, and then an entire two-year warranty expense is recorded in the year that those goods are sold, even if the repairs might be done two years out. Let's take a look at an example. Denison Machinery Company begins production of a new machine in July of 2020. It sells 100 of these machines for $5,000 cash each. By the end of the year, that gave a total sales revenue of 500000 Each machine is under warranty for one year. Denison estimates, based on past experience with similar machines, that the warranty cost to the company will average $200 per unit for a total warranty expense of $20,000. As a result of parts replacements and services performed in compliance with the warranties, the company incurred $4,000 of warranty costs in 2020 and an additional $16,000 of warranty costs in 2021. So the question is, these costs that are incurred and in, that we know that we're going to incur in 2021, are those included as part of the expense in 2020 or when we incur those costs, is that an expense in 2021? Let's work through the example. Let's work through our journal entries step by step. First, prepare the journal entry to record the sales of the machines. This is easy. We don't know the cost of the machines, so we're simply going to record the cash receipt of 500,000. This is given 
and this offsetting sales revenue that we're going to record on the sales of the machines in 20 from July through uh, December 2020. The next slide we see the next thing that happens so we know in the accounting period 2020 with an assurance type warranty we need to record the entire expense the full twenty thousand dollar estimated expense but that's not booked at the time that the sale takes place it's booked as an adjusting entry because what happens before then is between july and december customers come in and they say my uh, machine broke you need to fix it for me it's still under warranty so as time has gone on, the company, each time a customer comes in and says, um, you need to fix this for me, the company records warranty expense for the actual expense incurred in that year 2020. And we were told that it's $4,000 worth of repairs took place in 2020 before the end of the year. The credit to this, well, it depends on whatever the company, whatever cost the company had to incur. Maybe they had to um, pay a repairman to do it. Maybe they gave up parts and reduce their inventory. Maybe they had to pay their own people or they have salaries payable. We're just going to use this, uh, this one account, cash inventory, salaries payable, to account for those costs that did take of repairs that did take place this year. And then at year end, the company needs to record an adjusting entry. That adjusting entry relates to the expected future cost of warranty repairs in the next accounting period. But we're not going to wait till the next accounting period to record those as an expense. We're going to record the expense, the full $20,000 estimated warranty expense in year 2020, because that's the year that the, the related products, the machines were sold. So at year end, December 31st, the company records warranty expense. Now the warranty expense for the year needs to be $20,000. But remember, we've already recorded in 2020, $4,000. These are the actual warranty costs incurred. So we need to, at, the, at year end, recording an adjusting entry for the difference. The expenses that have, the total expense was $20,000, but we've already booked an entry. We've already recorded $4,000 worth of warranty expense. The other side of this journal entry is going to be warranty liability. We're going to owe some amount when we do our repairs in the future. Let's just record that into warranty liability. Now, at the end of the accounting period, once the financial statements are put are prepared, what will the balance sheet report and what will the income statement report? So the first liability was uh, booked on December 31st, so we would have this warranty liability. of 16,000. That represents those repairs that have not yet taken place. And the year-end income statement would report warranty expense for how much? 4,000, 16,000, or 20,000. The warranty expense is the t sum of these two entries, 4,000 plus 6,000, so a total of 20,000. That's exactly what we want because we want the total expense reported in the year period that the total sales are recorded. And one more related journal entry. Prepare the entry to record the payment for the warranty costs that are incurred. In remember, the company had an additional sixteen thousand dollars of warranty uh, costs of repairs that the company had to do in the accounting period twenty twenty one. Once it makes that actual um, or makes the repairs or pays its people or employs its uh, employ it gives, has its employees do the work we're going to need to record an entry. Key thing to keep in mind that the debit is not to warranty expense. We've already recorded all the expense we're going to record. What we do now is reduce the warranty payable because remember at year end 2020, we accrued a payable. Let's take that off the books. And then we actually make the repairs and we're gonna use this account again here, cash. Maybe we paid repair people. Maybe we gave up parts so we credit to reduce inventory and maybe we uh, owe our own employees for salaries payable for 16,000. And so at the end of 2021, after this entry is booked, there's no more warranty liability.
So the warranty liability is zero. And if this was all that took place for the company in 2021, what would warranty expense be for 2021? It would also be zero. Here we have one more slide at the end of 2021. The balance in warranty liability, again, as we wrote on the last slide, is zero. Remember that there are two types of warranties. One is the assurance type warranty, and that comes with the product. There's no additional cost to the customer. The service type warranty is the other type. It's an optional warranty that the customer can choose to buy. It can either be a product that came with no warranty at all, and you have to buy if you want any, or it can be like an extended warranty. Maybe um, your iPhone came with a one-year warranty, and after that you can choose to pay um, some amount of money for the second, third, and fourth years of ownership. So service type warranty um, provides additional service beyond what uh, is just comes with the product. And some points that we need to know about service type warranties. They are recorded as a separate performance obligation. So when you think of the term performance obligation, what kind of account does that sound like? Asset, liability, revenue, or an expense? Well, obligation, something that I have to do in the future, that's a liability. So recorded as a separate liability and usually recorded by the company who's now selling this warranty, this service type warranty, usually recorded as what type of liability unearned revenue. Maybe Apple on, on day one, when Apple sells a phone, it charges $50 for uh, a warranty, a service type warranty. You pay that up front. You as customer, when the company receives it, it records that $50 into unearned revenue or unearned, more specifically, unearned warranty revenue account. And then as time passes during that warranty period, the company starts recording the reduction to the unearned warranty revenue and an increase in warranty revenue. And that revenue is usually recorded on a straight line basis. Over the warranty period. How about the expenses? So when the customer comes in and says, my iPhone broke, it's under warranty, you need to repair it. How do we record those expenses? Do we record the expenses fully in the time of sale the way that we did in an insurance type warranty? The answer to that is no, completely different. The expenses are recorded as incurred. So this is completely different from the assurance type warranty. And because of this, an estimated warranty liability account is never used, never used. Let's go on to an example. You purchase an automobile from Hamlin Auto for $30,000 on January 2nd, 2020. You also purchase for $900 a service type warranty for three years. Now that warranty is going to cover you for 2020, 2021, and 2022. Hamlin records revenue on a service type warranty on a straight line basis. Hamlin incurs warranty costs of $100 in 2020. What entry should the company record in 2020 and what will the 1231-20 year-end balance sheet and income statement report related to this service type warranty? Okay, so let's take, let's break this down. What entries should the company record in 2020 related to, uh, well, we know that the company is going to, they're recording uh, on the date of sale on January 2nd. Right, January 2nd, 2020, the company receives cash. It sells two things. It sells the automobile and it sells the warranty. So the cash is going to be the sum of both. $30,000 for the car plus the $900 for the three-year warranty. How much revenue is going to be recorded on January 2nd? Only the what it's, what's been earned so far. 
which is the amount that relates to the car, because that's given to the customer. The rest of it that relates to the warranty is going to be recorded into a liability account called unearned warranty revenue. Okay, what other entries do we need to record? Let's go back to our example here. We see that Hamlin records, uh, incurs warranty costs during 2020. So at the time that the customer comes in and says, uh, need to, you need to make this repair, it, those repair costs cost the company $100. At the time the actual costs are incurred, the company then records warranty expense. So this portion of these costs, now if the company incurs costs in 2021, let's say another uh, $300 worth of costs in 2021, well, that will be an expense in 2021. We don't have to worry about that in 2020, the way that we did have to worry about the estimated total expense in the year of sale with an insurance type warranty. So here again, we're accounting for the costs that were incurred, debit warranty expense, and then credit this cash inventory salaries payable or wages payable account because we don't know exactly what how the company paid it and what else do we need to record for 2020 at the end at the end of the counting period the company needs to record an adjusting entry because time has passed and each day that passed, the company's earning a little bit of that un one year's worth of that unearned revenue. So as an adjusting entry on 1231.20, the company needs to record the fact that it earned one third of the revenue. So the unearned warranty revenue account is going to decrease. Remember, if this was a $900 warranty that covered three years. So at the end of year one, we record $300. We reduce the liability unearned warranty revenue for 300 and we increase the warranty revenue account by 300. What will the year ended 1230 20, 1231-20 balance sheet report? And what will the income statement report for the year 1231, ended 1231, 2020 for the service type warranty? The balance sheet is going to report unearned warranty, unearned warranty revenue. Remember that balance began at $900 at the time of the sale, and then we reduced it as an adjusting entry right before the financial statements were prepared, were put together. We reduced it by 300. So the balance in the unearned warranty revenue account is going to be 600. Nine hundred minus the three hundred that was booked as the adjusting entry, and then the income statement. What is the income statement going to report related to the warranty? Warranty revenue for one year of three hundred. And that concludes our our discussion of contingencies in general and of the two types of warranties, assurance type warranty and service type warranty. The next video is going to look at an additional specific loss contingency, environmental retirement obligations.